Hi, welcome to my tech talk on crypto ransomware. I've always been interested in ransomware, how it's built, how it's deployed, and how it's defeated. So today I'm going to tell you about crypto ransomware and why it's on the rise, the algorithms that make it possible, and how these algorithm implementations play out for crypto ransomware in the real world. So what is ransomware? As the name suggests, it's a type of malware that demands money from the victim. Ransomware dominates the malware market and crypto ransomware specifically encrypts your files and doesn't allow you to have your files back until you pay for a key. And it's only getting easier to do. With the growth of ransomware as a service, people no longer need to have the skills to create ransomware or know how to run the operations. They can just download a kit, pay back a percentage of each profit made to the operator, and they've started a lucrative career as a cyber criminal. At the heart of all of this is encryption. What makes crypto ransomware so dangerous is that it uses methods that are designed to be unbreakable. And we want these methods to be unbreakable because we use these same methods every day for secure communication, for things like online shopping and text messaging. So at a high level, an encryption algorithm or a cipher is just a mathematical function that combines an inputted string with another string called a key, and their combination is the encrypted output. So the goal of any encryption algorithm is to make it as difficult as possible to reverse that output without using the key. So these algorithms need to create randomness and then hide the patterns that led to that randomness. Well, there are two main types of encryption algorithms. The most popular in crypto ransomware is called symmetric encryption, which you'll also hear called secret key cipher. It works with one single key that is used to encrypt and decrypt. Now the functions are inverses, thus the name symmetric encryption. And cyber criminals like this algorithm because it's the computationally cheapest way to encrypt files. But the price of that cheap processing power is that the key can be intercepted. So how does symmetric encryption work? Well, it comes in a few flavors that I won't get to today. So just keep in mind, symmetric algorithms have a lot more steps than I'm letting on in this slide, but this is the basic math that makes up those steps. And we're going all the way back down to bits, comparing ones and zeros with exclusive OR, commonly called the ZOR operator. So the function compares bit by bit and applies the ZOR logic. We return one if the two bits are different, and if both bits are the same, we return zero. Another way to think about it is that adding the bits together gives the same result as finding the ZOR of those values, but the numbers are not carried over. So our file gets converted to a string of bits called the plain text. We have a key, which is also a string of bits. We compare file bit to key bit, find the ZOR, and the result is our cipher text. So why ZOR over AND or just plain OR? Well, it makes sure that the amount of zeros and ones is equally distributed, making it harder to find any patterns. And ZOR also makes decryption easy. We just ZOR the ciphertext bits and the key bits to get the plain text back. But what can we do if we don't want the key to be intercepted? Well, that's where the other type of algorithm, asymmetric encryption or public key ciphers comes into the picture. We create security by having two keys instead of one. So one is the public key that's used to encrypt and can be shared. And the other is a corresponding private key that's kept elsewhere. So the most popular type of public key cipher, RSA, is used by most e-commerce sites. But this type of algorithm has two major drawbacks. First is that the two keys need to be a lot larger than the key used in symmetric encryption for the same amount of security. And this algorithm is much slower, 100 to 1,000 times slower than symmetric encryption. And these two keys are linked together through math. There's different ways this is done. One way is by using two huge prime numbers, which is how the RSA algorithm creates its keys. I'm only gonna to talk today about the process for creating the public key, but the private key also uses these numbers. So each key has two values. The first is the value of the public key is the product of multiplying the two prime numbers. So for a secure algorithm, the first value is at least 1,024 bits. So at least 309 decimal digits long to give you an idea. To keep it simple, I'm using 7 and 13, which gives us our first value of 91. And then the second value of the public key is an odd number greater than 1 that is also mathematically related to the prime numbers. You can see that relationship on the slide. Here I've chosen 5. 
So our file is also converted to some number and we combine these two by taking the file number to the power of the second value, so 10 to the fifth here, and then run that through modulo addition similar to symmetric encryption. But instead of two as our modulus, we're using the first value of the public key, 91. The remainder is our ciphertext. So the power of RSA comes from the fact that it's easy to multiply two prime numbers together, but factoring to try and recover those two numbers is really hard. So both these algorithms, when implemented correctly, create random looking outputs. So what's a cyber criminal to do when they want the speed of symmetric encryption, but the security of asymmetric encryption? They use both. Both is good. So most ransomware today has some kind of multi-level encryption, using symmetric encryption on the files for the speed and the offline access, and then using asymmetric encryption on that secret key in any communication to its server. So this sounds great for cyber criminals. They have fast performance and tight security, but of course there are drawbacks. If the attacker servers can't be reached, then the encryption process can be undone because they've only used symmetric encryption up to that point. And they also have to make sure that they use a different set of asymmetric keys for each infection, or else if the victim pays for a private key and shares it, and each victim has the same public key, everyone can get their files back. So you may have noticed already the main reason why ransomware fails, human error. Or as the algorithm design manual says, the most serious security holes are human, not algorithmic. So in general, it's easier to hack into a system than to crack a large secret key. So a lot of the time, the key is uncovered by intercepting it. For example, if we can intercept the ransomware's request to the server, we can get all the information required to recover the key, which is how the first version of crypto defense was cracked. You'll also see ransomware using victims' built-in encryption programs to create the secret key. It's clever, but sometimes the ransomware doesn't have programming to delete the key or the user's backup files. So crypto defense version two, trying to patch up the mistake in version one did this. So the secret key could be found and was just fed back into the built-in program to decrypt. So crypto defense made the same mistake twice, using encryption, but giving away the key. You'll also be surprised by the amount of implementation mistakes that are made. I think it's because of a catch-22 with the keys for both algorithms. The larger the key in the crypto ransomware, the more secure it is from an attack, but in doing that, there's more places in the program for coding mistakes that help with pattern breaking. For example, Petya refactored the symmetric algorithm they used in their code, which led to a lot of mistakes. One of the many was that the 512-bit key they made ended up having 256 bits of constant and predictable values. So since you can try every possible key combination through brute force attack with half the key figured out, that made it much easier to crack. People will also anonymously release keys online, and some ransomwares like Crisis release keys anytime a new version is made as part of their business model. So even though coders of every type make mistakes, like any good software vendor, flaws in ransomware get patched up and new versions are released. So just be safe and keep your operating system and software up to date. So if you want to learn more about ransomware encryption algorithms, my presentation is posted on GitHub. And the appendix has a lot of great stuff that didn't make it into today's tech talk. Thank you.